That was flawless. Simply amazing. SpaceX did it. What a stunning spectacle of the SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy IFT-2 soaring into the sky. All 33 engines blazed in harmony, and hey, no debris storms this time. The hot staging was a masterful fusion of art and science, creating a breathtaking melody. Sure, Ship 25 didn't make it back from space, but that's part of the process. Test, fail, improve, repeat until perfection. This is the way. Kudos to the SpaceX team. All right, let's get more in depth about this historic flight. As the clock paused at 40 seconds, SpaceX managers checked an issue in Starship's upper stage before giving it the final go. At 8 a.m. ET, the Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines roared to life, blasting a fiery plume and shaking the ground at SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site on the Texas coast. The 33 engines seemed to perform flawlessly, pushing the rocket through Max Q, the most stressful part of the ascent. Then, the Super Heavy booster separated from the Starship upper stage, marking a major milestone that was missed in April. So far, today has been incredibly successful, even with the rud of the Super Heavy booster. Kate Tice, SpaceX's quality engineer on the company's webcast. At about two and a half minutes after Roaring to life and vaulting off the launch pad, the Super Heavy booster expended most of its fuel, prompting the Starship spacecraft to fire its own engines and break away. SpaceX aims to send the spacecraft to near-orbital velocities, orbital velocities typically around 17,500 miles per hour, which roughly translates to about 28,000 kilometers per hour. After surviving the heated stage separation, the Starship spacecraft was using its own six engines to continue propelling itself to fast speeds. But before Starship could reach orbit, SpaceX Mission Control lost contact with it and stopped receiving data. At about 12 minutes into the flight, SpaceX triggered the automated flight termination system, meaning they had to abort and make the second stage undergo RUD as well. So we think we may have lost the second stage. John Innsbrucker just said on the broadcast. He says they believe that an automated detonation had occurred. Raptor engines on Starship and it headed away, everything really looked good. But what we do believe right now is that the automated flight termination system on second stage appears to have triggered very late in the burn as we were headed downrange out over the Gulf of Mexico said John Innsbrucker, SpaceX's principal integration engineer, during the live broadcast today. If Starship had successfully flown, it would have reached an altitude of about 146 miles, with a planned splashdown at around 8.30 central off the coast of Kauai, Hawaii. According to a statement on the company's website, SpaceX later determined that in the first few minutes of the April flight, propellant leaked from the Super Heavy booster and caused fires that severed the connection with the prior primary flight computer. That's why the upper stage and booster failed to separate, SpaceX concluded. Engineers lost control of the vehicle and had to abort, blowing the rocket up with the flight termination system. In any case, this is still a huge success for SpaceX. Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting second integrated flight test of Starship. Starship successfully lifted off under the power of all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster and made it through stage separation. CEO Elon Musk also congratulated his team on X. Additionally, Bill Nelson said, congrats to the teams who made progress on today's flight test. Spaceflight is a bold adventure demanding a can-do spirit and daring innovation. Today's test is an opportunity to learn, then fly again. Together, NASA and SpaceX will return humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Adding on to the accolades was Jim Free, NASA's ex exploration head, who chimed in with, each test represents a step closer to putting the first woman on the moon with the Artemis 3 Starship human landing system. Looking forward to seeing what can be learned from this test that moves us closer to the next milestone. Indeed, despite the system's explosion, it performed astronomically better than its predecessors first showing off the launch pad seven months ago, when several of the Super Heavy's engines unexpectedly 
unexpectedly powered off, causing it to spiral out of control just minutes after liftoff. One reason for April's unscheduled disassembly was the failure of Starship's two stages to separate. To prevent a recurrence of this problem on the second flight, SpaceX decided to go with a new strategy, hot staging, in which the upper stage's engines begin firing before Starship and Super Heavy have fully separated. This concept isn't anything groundbreaking, as it has been used on vehicles like the Titan II from NASA's Gemini program in the 1960s and Russia's venerable Soyuz rocket, which is still in operation. Starship's stage separation occurred on time today, about 2 minutes and 41 seconds after liftoff, and appeared to go smoothly, but the Super Heavy booster exploded shortly afterward. But we're gonna take that data and figure out how we can make the booster better for the next hot stage. SpaceX quality engineering manager Kate Tice said during the live broadcast. SpaceX had hoped to soft land the Super Heavy in the Gulf of Mexico to test re-entry and landing processes. The spacecraft was never expected to reach full orbit around Earth, instead flying on a suborbital trajectory to splash down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. And we're not targeting orbit today. We're targeting almost orbit today. Um, that's very intentional as part of the mission design. The goal is to get to a thrust profile similar to what we would need for orbit, but also and to get to the energy levels fusion. that the ship would need to dissipate for re-entry. Said Siva Bharadvaj, a SpaceX operations engineer. Honestly, such an incredibly successful day. Even though we did have um, a RUD or a rapid unscheduled disassembly of both the Super Heavy booster and the ship, that's great. We got so much data and that will all help us to improve for our next flight. Starship's launch today was hoped to lead to an uptick in launch cadence for new vehicles as further refined designs make their way to the launch pad in Boca Chica. Currently, the Starship's test iterations don't include any of the cabin or life support components needed to carry a payload or sustain a crew, but SpaceX is betting big on the rocket's success. However, SpaceX will have to investigate the causes of the Starship failure and develop a new way to keep the Super Heavy from exploding after hot staging. Next, several key milestones are ahead in this test flight. SpaceX's goal is to send the Starship capsule on nearly one full lap of the Earth, guiding the vehicle back from space over the Pacific Ocean and splashing down off the coast of Hawaii. The entire journey is expected to take an hour and a half. Safely re-entering Earth's atmosphere will be a key test for the spacecraft. SpaceX will be keeping a close eye on how Starship's heat shield, the black hexagonal tiles that coat the spacecraft's belly and protect it from the fiery physics of re-entry, will perform. The company may also test a maneuver that Starship will use to slow its descent. The process the process involves the vehicle flying in horizontally, horizontally, flying in horizontally, mimicking a skydiver before using its engines to swiftly reorient to an upward position as it approaches the ground, or in this case, the ocean. SpaceX only briefly tested the maneuver in May of 2021 at much lower altitudes and speeds using an early Starship prototype. The Starship capsule will be discarded after this flight, but SpaceX aims to eventually land refuel and reuse both parts. No rocket in history has ever had a reusable first and second stage, a scenario that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has called the holy grail of spaceflight economics, with the potential to drastically reduce the price of sending cargo, people, and satellites to orbit. Even if this uncrewed test flight is wholly successful, however, SpaceX has plenty left to prove and several high-stakes ventures riding on Starship's eventual success. SpaceX still needs to demonstrate the rocket can safely deliver a payload to orbit and hash out how to refuel the Starship spacecraft after launch. Topping off the vehicle's propellant after leaving Earth will be necessary for the Starship to complete missions to deep space, including the planned moon landing. Already, Jim Free, Associate Administrator of NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, has warned that Starship delays could push that launch to 2026 or force the space agency to adjust its goals for 
the Artemis 3 mission. The Starship has several other key missions lined up, including a private mission to send Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa and eight guests around the moon, launching the next version of SpaceX's internet beaming satellites, and in Musk's grand vision, perhaps one day sending humans to Mars. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to this groundbreaking piece of aerospace history. If you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go on ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today and you'll gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX and until next time, keep looking up.